I wanted to point out this was only 50 cents per bag and I end up using these bags to create my own outdoor pillow. I use this polyfilm which actually goes over your window. This is four mil thick. You get 200 square feet which is quite a lot and it was only like four dollars. I think I got it from Walmart. You can find it there or your local hardware store. So I laid it out on the floor then I took the cushion insert that I wanted to put inside of the outside of the pillow. So the beginning uh, fabric I just showed you would be like the outside and this would be the inside. I hope that makes a little more sense and it should if you follow along. So after I've lined up exactly where I want the plastic to cover this inside of the pillow, I'm then going to cut it. Then I have everything lined up. I'm going to take some hot glue and if you have a low setting on your hot glue gun, I do recommend a low setting because we are gluing this plastic onto itself and when you are pushing on it, it can be very hot and go right through that plastic and actually burn you. So if you have anything to protect your hands, that hot glue will not burn you or maybe you have like um, an old pencil where you can push the pencil in to the plastic to hold it down instead of using your finger like something like that I'm just telling you I burned myself so many times doing this and it was not fun so then when I got to the side here I just took the corners and I folded them down in and then I just hot glued the edges down over that folded edge then once I had the side together I was able to Pull it very tight, put some hot glue down in the inside, and then I pushed the other part of the plastic right over it and pushed it down. And it stuck pretty well. And you do want to try to get hot glue inside every little piece of that plastic because these are going to be our outdoor cushions. We don't want any water seeping in through the, any kind of crack or you know a hole or something and getting this cushion soaked so so the ones I'm actually working on are going to be that couch that you guys have seen the pallet couch so I made my own custom cushions for that pallet couch I have three for the back and then these larger pieces are actually the ones you'll be sitting on okay so I'm gonna actually use like now that you guys have seen all the plastic coating over the actual cushions just to protect them a bit more. I'm gonna use literally like a bed sheet I got from Goodwill or Salvation Army, but I'm using a couple white ones. So they're thrifted. They were like $1.99 to $2.99 for each one. So it really was pretty inexpensive. So after I get all my fabric around, I'm just gonna try and get white for like the big cushions. And, uh, well, all the ones you guys just saw, like, so this is all, like, the main cushions that go on the out outside pallet couch that I made. So, they fit perfectly. I cut them to size. And the stuffing, the, the yellow stuff that you guys saw, is actually an old bed foam thing that, like, a bed topper made out of foam. It's, like, four inches thick. My friend was throwing it out and I said, oh, I'll take it and turn them into cushions. So I cut it up and one whole thing actually made all those cushions. So I was, I was really impressed because I ended up just tearing apart um, here. We'll go like look really quick. Just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Uh, this is like the four inch thickness, but it, it actually has like two that are glued together. So I ended up just like taking these apart, like ripping them apart to create like one skinny little piece. And these are actually going to go on the back side, like your back would be up against these three. And then I have three large ones that you'll actually be sitting on. And then I'm also going to be making other cushions, you know, so it's like decorative. So I'm gonna be making three additional cushions and I already have two that are out there. So this should be interesting. I got these pillows on sale. I think I only paid $4 for all three of them. Like something like that. Um, even though this says like $3.99, I did not pay that. It was like a thrift place that I got these at. I think they are supposed to be outdoor cushions. 
The inside is 100% polyester, and then this material on the pillow is like, I don't know if it's waterproof or not, but that's okay. I'm gonna get the fabric around for these as well, and then I'm gonna show you guys how I am actually gonna waterproof my own fabric. So I'll show you guys how I do that. So for one of the cushions that I'm making additionally that are gonna just sit out there, more like a decorative cushion, um, I'm gonna actually use one of these bags. I have this on hand, but I got this from Hobby Lobby for like a $2 and some change because I used a coupon on it. And originally it's like three fifty dollars or something like that, but you get a lot of fabric with this bag. So I wanted to basically recreate like another pillowcase, my waterproof mixture over this as well, just so that this is safe after I get done painting my design and everything on this pillow. But I'm gonna do it very similar to how I made my boho pillow. That so it's gonna be very similar to this pillow here. It's a really nice durable pillow. The material is canvas or duck cloth, if you will. It's made out of that bag that I got at Hobby Lobby, but this is held up really nicely. I mean, I don't use it all the time. So I will actually link a video in the cards above as well as the description so you guys can find that video of where I stripped this whole bag apart with a seam ripper and then I ironed it out and then painted my design. So that's what I'm gonna do with this, but I'm not gonna show you every little detail in this video. So I wanted to point out, um, I went ahead and got that canvas bag. Everything is like taken apart. So this is ready to be ironed and we can paint a design, whatever we want on it. And this right here, I got from Dollar Tree. It was a rolled up piece of fabric, maybe like half a yard or something like that. Maybe not quite even. It's pretty small to be honest, but figured this actually stretches over one of the pillows I have. So I'm gonna use this as the front side of one of the pillows. I was considering using this, but the fabric isn't like big enough for one of the pillows. But I do wanna point out like pillows can be expensive, so making your own outdoor cushions is a really good way to save some money. So this is also from Dollar Tree, it's just a bag. I thought it was really cute, so I'm actually gonna turn this into an outdoor pillow. The fabric is really nice. You can see it's like this, it has these little holes, so it's like breathable. But I know that this fabric's, it's like waterproof. I mean, it's not like completely waterproof, but I figured I'll paint that stuff over top of it to make it waterproof. But to turn this bag into the pillow, I'm first going to turn it inside out and I'm not gonna mess with any of these stitches right here because I'm actually gonna leave the yellow like how it is. I'm just gonna undo the stitch that's holding this corner piece in. So if I turn it inside out, so this little piece is what I'm gonna undo. Just this corner that's holding the piece together on the bottom to make like the bag. So I'm gonna undo the threads right here and I'm gonna stop about here. I don't wanna undo all of this because it's already stitched together. I'm gonna just leave it. So we're just gonna undo this and then fold it outwards so that it's back to normal looking, I guess. Here, I'll just do one really quick and show you guys. So again, all I did was undo like from here to here in the inside and then I'm gonna fold this outwards like this. So right now the bag is inside out, so let's turn it inside out so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so I turned it inside out so you guys can see. Now we have all this extra, like, we have inches on both sides here that just made this whole bag, like, appear, like, longer because this was all folded up and sewed. So I'm going to fold these inwards, like the edges, and then I'm gonna sew a line. I'm gonna do that, sew the inside. You know how like this is? So we'll have to turn it back inside out. Okay, it's inside out. So all I would literally do is make sure this is all lined up and pin this together just like that and do a stitch from here and then stop about right here where this is already 
stitch together right here and we'll do back stitches on both ends so I'm literally just like sewing that little section because all of this is already sewed together I don't need to mess with it first actually I'm gonna still take my seam ripper and I'm gonna take out the threads on this one and this one that way it's gonna release the straps I'm gonna take all these straps out and take this piece of folded fabric and fold it back outwards so we have another inch added on to this all right as you can see that little piece I took off the handles over here and I unfolded it like I said so I just took out all those threads fold it back like this and then we're just gonna sew from here to here and connect this so it's like flat with the other side all right, guys, I wanted to sh go ahead and show you how I'm going to waterproof my cushions for outdoor seating. You know what I mean? These are outdoor cushions that I made. So as you saw in the beginning, how I made them, and then I just cut up these white sheets I got from Salvation Army. So this very cheap, like, fabric. It's 100% cotton. So... That's, I don't think the fabric really matters because I am going to waterproof it with this waterproof method that I found on uh, somebody. I actually found it on Google. So you can actually paint over multiple different things to waterproof them. And it's flexible, what I'm going to be using. So when you sit down and everything like this, so it won't be stiff or anything. I mean, it will be a little bit because of the cushion in the inside. You can see what I'm squeezing. And that noise in there is the plastic covering over the cushion. The cushion really will not get soaked at all. I just leave this sit. But if it does storm or rain, I do plan on trying to bring these in as much as possible. But if for some reason I'm not home, like I'm at work and it's storming, they're going to be perfectly fine. I do want to point out when I made these, I cut them to size and then I sewed up three of the corner or three of the sides. And then the last side over here, you can see, actually, not that one. Right here, there's actually no threads. I actually just used hot glue. And I used, I basically just had one piece of the fabric. So this side of the fabric was just laying flat like this. And then the other side, I just took, or folded it inward, some hot glue, like a little teeny line, about an inch or so. And then I laid the fabric right over. And then I just continued going all the way down. And you can see I kind of messed up a little bit. But that's perfectly fine. As long as, like, when you pull it apart, you don't see any little holes or gaps because water can get down in there. And we do not want that. So make sure everything is solid. It's not, like, the prettiest looking on the cushions. But these, this side will go on the back. So you won't even see it anyway. And you can always use other fabric if you don't want white. Maybe you want to do like a pattern or something like that. I just went with white just because I plan on changing out like the decor and stuff. Not so much the cushions around. I can always change out the throw pillows if I wanted to. So I went with just white. And over time, this will kind of, from the rain and stuff, this fabric, it may end up like looking dingy like a yellowy color i don't really know because this is my first time making my own outdoor cushions we will find out hopefully this waterproof method that i use works really well okay so let's go ahead and get started on waterproofing them all right so i'm going to show you guys how to make that waterproofing method for your outdoor cushions i'm using a brush and a bowl we're going to need odorless mineral spirits and I chose the odorless because you don't want an odor left on your cushions or whatever you're waterproofing. This I got from Menards. And then you're also going to want 100% waterproof, 100% silicone. This is in clear. You definitely want clear so your color of fabric or whatever will pop through. If you get white, it's going to be diluted white and have this like foggy color over your print or whatever so make sure you get clear now I could not find like the ratio for this online so I literally just mix up my own 
So I pour a lot of mineral spirits in. Like so. So that was probably like uh, one fourth of the can in the bowl. And then the clear silicone. Okay, I finally got it to start coming out the top of it. So I'm going to just start putting like a lot in here. Okay, that's probably good for now. And set it like that so that it doesn't, you know, ooze everywhere. We don't want that right now. Not while I'm trying to mix this. Oop. And then with the solution here, you guys can't really see it. Let me turn the camera. So it looks like that. Sorry, the camera's shaking. Um, you're going to go ahead and mix this all around with the brush and make sure it's completely mixed around. We don't want anything that is like loose in there or anything like that. So just start mixing it around. All right, my mixture is fully mixed. It's going to be a clear, somewhat like you can see as it starts to fall. The consistency is thicker than like water, but it's not like jello or anything crazy. It's not like sticky. If you touch it, it is sticky. <laughs> okay, I'm not making any sense. All right, so basically after the mixture's all mixed together like this, we're going to go ahead and paint it on our cushions. And here I have all my cushions that I made. So I'm gonna go ahead and start painting this on. I got my mixture, my bowl, whatever. I'm gonna just start painting it all over with this. I'm really gonna focus on the seams. That's gonna be where I focus like first. And it might look scary at first because it's like this weird bubbly solution and it like turns your fabric dark, but that's not a big deal. It's a, it's part of the process. We're basically just diluting that silicone and then making it into like a liquid with the mineral spirits. And then when the silicone and mineral spirits solution dries on the fabric, you're going to be left with a thin layer of silicone that is waterproof. So that is how it works. Okay, so keep in mind when you, when you are painting this solution on the cushion, you definitely want to make sure the cushion itself is clean, that all of this is like ironed and everything because any little crease will be permanently there, which I don't really care because they're outdoor cushions, it's not that big of a deal for me. But if you were doing like a nicer pillow or a backpack or something like whatever you're waterproofing, you definitely want to make sure it's clean and there's no debris, there's no hair, dirt, threads, or anything because it, this stuff is going to seal it in and you won't be able to remove it. Most of the product is going to really soak into the fabric and it does still have a little stench to it, it has a smell. That smell will go away within like a one to two weeks or so after it's dried completely. So once it is dry, then I probably will go back through with another coat just for safety, but you really should be okay with one coat. If you, you know, thoroughly go over and over in the same spot, you should be fine. That entire bowl I just filled up, it was about halfway full. It's almost gone and I'm just now completing one cushion. I've done all of the, the thread area where it's connected. I've done this side back here and I'm almost done with this top up here. Again, do this outdoors or somewhere where there's airflow because it stinks really bad and this is a chemical that you really don't want to be breathing in. And when this is drying, you definitely want it to be drying either outside or in like a porch or something where it's not really in your home because it really stinks 
But again, within one to two weeks, that, that smell will go away. I've already tested this, pro this method on a couple cushions. I've only done one, one coat on about four different um, pillows for outside. And I threw some water on it to test it and it works really well. The water just bunches up into a ball and slides right off, making it waterproof. I hope you guys give this a try if you are considering making your own outdoor cushions because I, I recommend it way cheaper. Like I said, I used old foam that my friend was giving away off of his bed. So that's the foam. I use plastic wrap that goes around your window seal. About four mil thick is what it said. And that stuff is used to go outside your window in the winter time. I paid $4 for an entire roll. Only used half the roll to cover all of these cushions. So I use that plastic to cover the actual cushion. Then I have my fabric, which I got these white pieces of um, fabric, which was just a bed sheet from Salvation Army for like two, three dollars a piece. I only used three bed sheets. And then now I'm waterproofing it, which that cost me a dollar something for the silicone and then the mineral spirits was like five bucks or something. So overall, I've spent way less money if I were to buy outdoor cushions themselves, because for some reason, they're really expensive. I mean, on one cushion itself, I could spend like $22. That's really not in my budget. So that's why I like to make my own stuff. And these are custom size. They will fit my bench where other cushions if I just bought them from the store they're probably not gonna fit which means I'd have to get custom cushions made that's even more money that'd be like fifty dollars a cushion I probably spent way less I probably spent like maybe thirty dollars all together not even that to be honest and had all these cushions and pillows I'm going to sign off. Hopefully these are done when you come back. I did want to point out that because the materials that I was using, which you guys know, you just saw, um, I'm not sure if it's because like the type of product or what, but as it was drying, my hot glue seams, they did end up, um, if you can find one here, I kind of hid them so you like, you wouldn't see them, but I wanted to show you guys that my hot glue seams actually started to come apart a little bit here. You can see right here. So that might be a problem in the future. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna have them for the rest of the summer and then maybe next, for next summer, I will retackle these. These are all only gonna be out here for the summer months and then once fall starts to hit, I will start to bring them in you know, like when snow and everything comes, but I absolutely love the way they turned out. So affordable. They're not like perfect 100, but then again, what is about me or my house? <laughs> so yeah, I love that I can actually like just lay out here now and it feels like a little day bed or something. So thank you guys for watching. Catch you in the next video. Bye.